One of the key benefits of object-oriented programming in any programming language is a concept called inheritance, or to be precise, multi-level inheritance. You want to be able to create objects that inherit from other objects. So you create a behavior in one, and then other objects which inherit from it are going to get that behavior for free, and then you can extend the behavior if required. Now, in JavaScript, we've already seen something like that happen in the previous video. You were able to create something of an inheritance by putting something on the object's prototype and then having other prototypes inherit it. So when you have something on your prototype, let's say, take this picture, right? You have an employee function. You have employee instances created by calling new employee. And you have the employee's prototype. So you can have this kind of a multi-level inheritance. You know, you can see that that's happening already. But this is not exactly what we want. Let me give you a scenario where I'm going to use this inheritance and we'll see how to do this in JavaScript. So let's say I have an employee function, which, which is going to create employee instances. And I have things on the employee's prototype so that every employee is going to get it. Now, what I want to do is create some manager objects. And these managers are also employees. It makes sense that they are employees and they get all you know, the employee properties. But then you can have properties which are specific to manager. How do you do this in JavaScript? Well, this is a picture we've already seen. Now, let's say I create a manager function, and that function is going to have a prototype, of course, and I create a manager object. And this manager's prototype also has a dunder proto, which points to the object's prototype. This is something that happens for every function that you create as is. Now, what we want to do is change this up. So before we change it, let's create these functions and add some behaviors on the employee prototype. I'm going to start off with a clean Firefox window. I have opened the console here. So I'm going to create a function called employee, which takes in the name. And uh, let me set something on the employee's prototype. Let me have a get name method. which just gets the instance's name. This should be familiar now. Now let's say I create an instance of employee. Now I can access emp1.getName, and it's gonna get me the name. Now what I wanna do is create some manager objects. I want the manager I want the manager to have two fields. One is the name, and one is the department that they are managing. So let's say the start department equals department. So a manager is kind of like an employee, which has both the name field and the department field. And now I'm going to set manager's prototype to have a get department function, which just returns the start department. It's very similar to the employee. And now let's say I create a manager object. So this manager has a name Michael and he's managing the department sales. Now I have access to mgr.getDepartment, which is going to get me the department. But here's the problem. I cannot do mgr.getName because that function does not exist. It exists for employee, but it does not exist for manager. So if I had to do manager.getName, what I need to do is explicitly set the getName function on the manager's prototype. Right now, I just have the getDepartment property. I also have to have the getName property, which is going to be another function, which seems like a waste because there's already a getName property on the employee's prototype. Can we share this? So here's the picture. This is what's happening right now. We have the employee function, which has the prototype, and I have a get name property on the employee's prototype, which is how all EMPs, which are created by using new employee, is going to have the get name. Then we also have the manager function, and we have the manager's prototype, which has a get department. Okay, and even this has a dunder proto, which points to the object's prototype, of course, and then you have the manager over here. So in essence, both these set of objects, right? You have the employee function, employee's prototype pointing to the object prototype, the manager function and the manager's prototype, which also points to the object's prototype. 
So whatever is an employee is not accessible by manager. And whatever is in manager shouldn't be accessible by employee. So we are not going to solve that problem anyway. So how do we have these two prototypes share something? One way to have them share something is to put that on the objects prototype. You can say object.prototype.getName, in which case both the employee and the manager prototypes can have a get name property. But the problem of putting this over here is that every object in our JavaScript environment is going to get that get name property which is not good. We just want the employee and the manager to get it. So what we can do is, since this dunder proto is just a property reference on the manager's prototype, if we were to change this dunder proto reference to say, hey, don't look at the object's prototype. Instead, look at the employee's prototype. If I were to just have this dunder proto property point to the employee's prototype like this, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to look at the manager for a get name, manager doesn't have it. It's going to go to the manager's prototype. Does the manager's prototype have a get name? No, it doesn't. Then guess what happens? It's going to look at the employee's prototype and then say, hey, does this object have a get name? Well, it turns out it does. So it's going to return that value. So guess what we're doing over here? We're saying that anything we said on the employee's prototype is going to get accessed by the manager's prototype. But then you can also set something on the manager's prototype, which is accessible only for managers. They're not accessible for employees. So in essence, you have a multi-level hierarchy, multi-level inheritance over here. All you need to do is get the manager's prototype object and change the dunder proto property of that object to point to the employee's prototype instead of the default, just pointing to the object's prototype. So let's change this and see how this works. All right, so now here, manager.getName did not work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the prototype property of the manager. So I'm going to say manager.dunderproto, which is going to get me the manager's prototype. And now I have to change the dunderproto property of this to point to the employee's prototype rather than the object's prototype. So because right now, if I were to access the dunderproto property of this, this will be the object's prototype. Turns out it's true. So what I need to do is change this to point to employee dot prototype. Now what happens if I access manager dot get name? I'm gonna get back Michael. How did it work? Again, to show this picture. Since we have circumvented this over here, Dunder Proto is now pointing to the employee's prototype. It gets something from the employee. All right. Now I can have additional properties on the employee. So let's, if, let's say I were to add something on the employee's prototype. Employee dot prototype dot. Let's say get salary. Done. Let's say hundred. And I'm just going to have a temporary function like this here. Now I can access emp1.getSalary and it's going to give me the salary, but I can also access the manager.getSalary and it's going to get that same property. Hopefully this made sense. Again, this is one of those tricky topics. So please revisit this video if any of that is not clear. And uh, all I can say is that the best way to kind of internalize this concept is by just writing a few objects, writing some prototypes, setting properties on them, and then doing a short circuit like this. And uh, this doesn't have to be one level. You can go crazy with this. You can have another function whose prototype points to the manager's prototype. Now we have one more level and that object prototype, and then this prototype, then this prototype, and this prototype. So it kind of goes all the way in the chain to figure out where to look up a particular prototype. So this is multi-level inheritance in JavaScript. Very handy when you have this kind of a structure and uh, this is how you do it.